the Joe Rogan experience. This is the greatest time in human history where there's absolutely zero thinking. When I say zero thinking and or you're put in fear of thinking. I'll give you a little example. Okay. I had, I came in, I had to have a COVID test before I walked in here, right? So I was talking to your nurse and, and um, I said, I had it. I had it in December and I didn't tell anyone. Because I didn't, I put it on social media and I put it everywhere because I didn't want people like, oh, we're gonna cancel shows and blah 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 blah. It's just the hysteria that goes. How bad was it? It was like a very mild sinus infection. Basically, it's, it's what Jamie had. Basically, it started. It started in my nose, all right, and then I had a little like <clears throat> I had one of those. But I immediately, from the past, anytime I get sick, I'm traveling, so I know. I've had, I've been sick on the road. I immediately put a nose spray, constant cleaning, and I have an um, inhaler, like a steroid, to, to get mm -hmm. my lungs going. So I started that. The next day, body felt like I was getting something, and which I've had in the past. Almost, if I, I don't get the chills, my, my skin gets really sensitive. And then after that... A little tired, but I had I can breathe, but clearly I had a sinus infection. That's the best way to describe it. Now here's the thing. Now I gave it to my wife and my youngest daughter, and the other two. But my other two daughters were like, "We're out of here. We're getting tested." They both negative. Shoom! They left the house. <laughs> we're out of here, and they got bubbles around the head and freaking wearing their space outfits. So they're gone. My youngest one comes home from school, and she has to take a test, and they say, you're positive. And she was. She clearly got sick. My wife's sick. I'm sick now. None of us, I, I have an infectious disease doctor in New Jersey. His specialty is infectious disease. I said, Doc, my daughter is positive. I clearly gave it to her. He goes, you need to get tested before I see you. I said, okay, well, it's a two, three-day wait. In the meantime, did you have every, anything? He goes, take vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. He goes, do you have a high fever? I want no. He goes, do you have tr uh, trouble breathing? I want no. He goes, then don't worry about it. So part of me started getting infuriated. I said, so you're telling me the world is shutting down, and you're telling me to take vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc? He goes, I need you to get the test. Okay, I'll get the test. Now, I'm a little aggravated. I just want something to get rid of this. Right. Okay, that's all I want. Right. So now it's going on the second week. And it's this thing's annoying because I'm taking 2,000 Ds and 3,000 Cs and zinc and A and whatever he's telling me to do. My daughter is getting better. My wife still can't, D can't smell or taste. Um, and she's got stage four cancer. So she's like super high. She's doing great and all that. Not the, but she's doing great. She's on a trial. She's crushing it. So if anything, she's the most danger because of her immune system. Week two, I get a test. The same test I just took here, which is a very reliable test. And I told my doctor, hey, man, it's official. I tested positive. Which test did you take? As I took the rapid, he goes, that, I can't, I don't accept that one. You don't accept that? Infectious disease doctor, and you don't accept that test. What did he want? The PCR test? He wanted, yeah, whatever. He's got to go to a lab. Now, we're going on day 12, and you're still take, telling me to take vitamins and stuff? So finally, I said, I'm not, I'm not doing that test because then I got to go in the state and the system. And, and they called looking for my daughter. Can we speak to your daughter? No, you may not. Well, is she doing the appropriate things? I have it as her father. Well, what is she doing? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's what she's doing. You don't call my house. Government, you just overstepped your boundaries. You're just here to protect me, not to come knocking on my door to ask me what I'm doing and how I'm treating my 16-year-old. It's a very frightening place to be. Now, with that said, 
I then ask, hey, man, what can we do? He goes, I, I need that other test. And I went, I'm not getting the other test. So I called a friend, said, I'll get you something by tomorrow. I got stuff by the next day, and in two days that stuff was clear. So I started asking her, why don't people... And, and and I just left the town of Chester, New Jersey, and there was a um, there's a couple there's about fifteen of us, a group that formed this community during the whole COVID, and this one woman just got it, and she got hospitalized. And I went, whoa, what happened? And she said, I waited twelve days, and then I had a problem. I started freaking out, breathing, I went to the hospital. They gave me steroids and antibiotics and it cleared right up so my question is why do you have to test positive to wait to get antibiotics or steroids if neither one of them hurt you or kill you while you're still waiting to see what this does and she didn't have an answer and she's like that's a great question i go it's a simple it's just a question so if i'm a doctor and Joe Rogan comes to me and says, hey, man, my daughter's positive. I have sinus. Are you having trouble? No. Well, I can give you this because I know it's not going to kill you. And I know it's gonna, I'm going to give you antibiotics. And hopefully in two, three days, it will clear up. But it's not going to. Fa- and if it gets worse, then we'll take care of it then. Because clearly this is not going to make you worse. Right. So why isn't that being done? And then my other question was, if that doctor an infectious disease doctor, doesn't allow that test. How many people take that test and it counts as a number, but yet it doesn't count? So what is really going on is my question. There's a lot of confusion, a massive amount of people. There's a disease that kills some folks. And there's a disease that we, in the beginning stages of this pandemic thought was going to be far more severe than it turned out to be. And they never adjusted. That's the problem. The problem is it's still not good. You know, you don't want to catch COVID, but the vast majority of people who get it will be fine. 78% of the people that are hospitalized are obese. The Very, ob- obese yeah. people have a real mm-hmm. hard time with it. There's 6% of the people who died from COVID only had COVID. The other Can you 90, repeat that number? 6%. One more time. 6% of the people who died from COVID only had COVID. Whew. The other 94% had an average of 2.6 comorbidities. So almost three. More than two and a half comorbidities, meaning like obesity, d- d- you know, there's a bunch of different things that people have. Diabetes is a big one. Um, you know, uh, Alzheimer's. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like comorbidities that are, that are very dangerous if you get COVID. I'll tell you another one. So another one of our friends, his name is Rob. He's heavy. He's a mess, bro. Gout three times a year. He's a mess. He's totally heavy dude, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. July, he says, don't come near me. I have a sinus infection. And we all went, whoa, 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 whoa. Rob's off limits. Whoop, whoop, Rob's dying. We're laughing. Rob died. He's got it. He's done. We said, you should really go check that out, Rob. We don't hear from Rob. Next time, next thing, me and me and my wife went to Maine. Went on a, went on a mountain. We were on a we were on a lake. It was, it was the, one of the, I felt like I was in. If I die, that is where heaven's going to be. Is that trip with my wife? I come back. Gee, what's going on, Rob? What? He's in the hospital. What? He's on the it, he's on the uh, the ventilator. The ventilator one. What? Now he was a crazy Trump guy. He was like, oh, Trump, Trump. He was full blown. I would go there and like, oh my God, these guys are talking politics again. Oh, oh, no. Please get off. <laughs> Every morning, it was like, oh, the liberals, the Democrats. It was a nonstop. Like, oh my God, I just want to have a muffin and relax. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, and I, dude, I got caught up too. I, I would be a liar if I said I wasn't caught up in some stuff for a while. I was on the internet, like, dude, my dude, Jeff K's coming back. I was, oh my, of course, makes all sense in the world. I was, I, I was in, right? But this guy was like, if I ever get it, I'm taking hydrochloroquine. All right, that mm. was that's so now. 
and this is all still going, by the way. He gets admitted to the hospital, and here comes my next question. And there is an ending to this story. Um, he gets admitted. They say he's got brain damage from COVID. It's brain damage. Well, this is the information we're getting. Like, what? Never heard. What do you mean? Brain damage? Yeah, he's, he's not going to be able to walk. What? He's, he has brain damage. Then it turned out he had strokes. The COVID caused strokes. Mm. Then it turned out, no. He asked for a specific drug. They said, we can't give it to you in the state of Jersey. And we're going to have to do testing before it could do stuff. Next thing you know, the guy's on high blood pressure, pills, and all that. They didn't give him his meds. He stroked out. Oh. Cut to... He's brain dead. His wife can't. His wife and eleven-year-old, thirteen-year-old have have to say goodbye to him before they pull the plug. They're not allowed to be with him. Oh. They have to FaceTime. So here's a question for you. No, this this is going somewhere, bro. All right. Thank God, one of our crew said, "Please send this person there just to one last one last look." The specialist shows up, said he's not brain dead. He's dehydrated. Who's been taking care of this patient? And who said he was COVID? I want everything. Gets everything, said, I need the wife and children in here. Oh, well, it's against our... What's keeping you safe? What's keeping you safe? Bring his family in here. His family talks to him. His heart rate starts going up. In a week, he opens his eyes and communicates for the first time. And six weeks later, he now stands up for the first time. It was, uh, it was October. He finally got out. And he's still taking physical rehab. I got pictures of him, videos of him, and all that jazz. But he's recovering. So the point of my story is two things. They were ready to let him die. They were willing to. They already said he's dead, and you can't visit him. Jesus Christ. So what Where? What kind of fucking hospital is this? It's in New Jersey. That's crazy. So I'll t so, But my question is this. When it comes to not being able to see elderly in elderly homes, or you got to quarantine and all that, what keeps the workers safe? What keeps the, quote, heroes safe? And what? why can't you allow someone with a human touch because when you're when you're at your weakest moment in time, you need a human. You need pure love. You need that child. You need your mother to come visit you. They're the ones, even if you're in your house, and the fact that they are stopping that is pure evil in my mind. I don't it has nothing to do with safety. And if it is safety, then it's stupidity. And it's, if it's I just, and, and at protocol. the end of the day, it's they're evil. To, there is no protocol. It's stupidity. I in my opinion. what you're saying. I think they're. Tr I think in the general sense, they're trying to protect people from getting infected. Well, what That's keeps the people that works there infected? It, nothing. Well, then what? Well, there I mean, you go. They you wear just the, the tightest masks that you can, but there's other things. You then can give do. it to the child and the yeah, mom and dad. Exactly. No, I'm with you. I'm with you 100. percent If your kid was dying, Joe. Yeah. You're gonna allow them to keep you from seeing them? No. No. I'm gonna do my best. Right. Everybody you're going to smash that door down, bro. I'll tell you that right now. You're going to have to arrest me. Yeah. You're going to have to arrest me. So I, I feel the same way. I know what you're saying. You, you got to question everything. There's, but you're right about the touch, about love and about having hope and having someone come visit you. Despair is terrible for the immune system. All that stuff is... To, do you know what a nocebo is? You know what that means? No. It's the opposite of placebo. A placebo effect is they give you a sugar pill and it makes you think that you're doing well. And you're like, oh. And then all of a sudden your symptoms improve and you actually get better. Because yeah. your body is on a positive trip. Right? Yeah. Your body's like, oh, Jim got the medicine. Oh, we're healing up. And it literally has a, a, an actual physical measurable effect and it's called the placebo effect. Well, there's also something that they believe is more powerful than the placebo effect and that's the nocebo effect. The nocebo effect is telling someone that they have a disease, telling someone that there's an incurable disease or that they're sick and then they fucking panic. Now, here's a perfect example. Mm. In 2007, there was a guy that was a part of a trial 
that they were doing a, a double blind placebo controlled trial on antidepressants. So they're trying to find the efficacy of antidepressants and they give this guy um, the, these pills and he shows up at the hospital. He's got an empty bottle of pills and he goes, help me, help me. I took all the pills. I took all the pills. And this guy collapses. All right. They bring him into the emergency room. His fucking hot blood pressure is dangerously low. His heart rate is jacked up. He's pale. He's sick. They're like, oh, no. And so they, they find the guys. Uh, he, the guy has a pill bottle they brought in with him. They find the guy's physician that's a part of the clinical trial. And they bring the physician in. The physician tells him, you got the placebo. There's no medication here. This is, these are bullshit pills. There's nothing in them. All of a sudden, the guy gets better. Like that. His his heart rate balances, his blood pressure balances. Fifteen minutes later he's fine. The power of your mind. You, he was convinced that he was fucked. If you have someone in a hospital bed and you're telling them they're gonna die mm -hmm. and you're not gonna see your family mm -hmm. and the amount of stress and the pain, your symptoms will crash. Everything will get more fucked up. Your body will go into a total state of shock. There's been people that have died because they were incorrectly diagnosed with cancer and they went into this this shock where they can't believe that they, they're not gonna and then their their immune system crashes their body crashes and then they've done autopsies and they found out that it was benign and that's just what drives me nuts where nobody question you just go uh, no that's what they said Dude, that's where that's, that's what they said so that's what we're doing that's what voodoo is you know like Dude. people think that voodoo is bullshit what voodoo is, is you tell someone, if you're a charismatic person, you have white paint on your face and fucking feathers and skulls and on sticks, and you tell them, <laughs> I put a curse on you. <laughs> and, and you believe that shit, you'll be in a full terror. Yes. You'll be in a full terror, and then your life will fall apart. My hand to God, when I start my show, I say, and I've been saying, this is the greatest voodoo trick I've seen in humanity in my entire life, because that's what it is. It's the greatest voodoo trick in history. I, it's mind boggling. Now I'm able to, I'm able to sit and watch it and and dodge from it. But at the same time, I, I'm I'm baffled. How many people just don't question anything? It's mind boggling. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.